Hello students, in this video we'll construct the gradient in cylindrical coordinates and spherical coordinates. Let's recall our setup for gradients. Recall that if we have a transformation f, which is x of u, v, and w, y, which is g of u, v, and w, and z, which is h of u, v, and w, like so, then we form the vector field position that our setup is to form r of x, y, and z, which is r of u, v, and w as well, which is x i hat plus y j hat plus z k hat. And of course, since x depends on u, v, and w, y depends on u, v, and w, and z depends on u, v, and w, what we can do is we can form vectors. We can form partial r, partial u, which is going to be some number h1 normalizing factor i hat, some unit vector. Partial r, partial v is some number h2 vector j hat. And partial r, partial w, is h3 k hat, okay? And of course, these numbers, uh, so i, j, and k in orthogonal curvilinear coordinates for orthogonal curvilinear coordinates. Well, I'll pause, let's see. In this situation, it's the case that i dot j is i dot k is j dot k, and they're all equal to zero. And it's important to remember too that these h1, h2, h3, i, j, and k all depend on u, v, and w. So these are not constant, they all depend on u, v, and w. Okay, these h1, h2, and h3 are called the Lamé coefficients that we've seen before, h1, h2, and h3. This collection of coefficients are called Lamé coefficients. Okay. All right, excellent. And so now in a previous video, we constructed the gradient because I know that the differential, the arc length differential, we saw the arc length differential is really h1 squared du squared plus h2 squared dv squared plus h3 squared dw squared. And from this, we were able to compute what the gradient was. From this, we were able to see that the gradient, this implies that the gradient of a function f is one over h1 partial f partial u, and then what? i hat plus 1 over h2 partial f partial v j hat plus 1 over h3 partial f partial w k hat, like so. That's what the definition of the gradient was. We saw that in a previous video using this arc length differential. All right, and so now let's do some examples of this, right, to find the gradient and see how powerful this can be. So the first example we're going to do, example, and this is going to be cylindrical coordinates. Okay, so here your x is r cosine theta, your y is going to be r sine theta, and your z is just going to be z, okay? So let's do the r derivative of this thing. So what will part, the vectorial position once dr with respect to r going to be, right? The polar variable is going to be cosine theta and then sine theta. And then zero, right? There's no r over there. And so that says that h1 with respect to r, I'll call it h sub r, the Lamé coefficient with respect to r, is just equal to one. That's a unit vector, okay? Which says that this vector over here is in fact what? This vector over here, I'm going to call that my er vector because it's a unit vector already. So in the case when the Lamé coefficient is one, you get a unit vector. All right, let's do partial r, partial theta. Partial r, partial theta is going to be what? It's going to be negative r sine theta r cosine theta, and then zero, like that. And so that says that my h theta is going to be what? My h theta is going to be the, the length of this thing, right? And so what's the length of this thing? The length of this vector over here is just equal to r, right? And that tells me that my e theta, what will my e theta be? My e theta hat is going to be negative sine theta, cosine theta, zero, like that. Okay, that's my e theta. And let's do the last one. What's the last one going to be? The last one's going to be e z. So what's e z going to be? e z, or partial r, partial z. So the, in this case, it's going to be clear that e z is just going to be k hat, right? Because partial r, partial z is going to be just 0, 0, 1, so it's going to be the k hat vector. Okay, excellent. Notice that, of course, in this case, e r depends on theta. e theta depends on theta, right? So in other words, these vectors, even though e z is not changing, it's constant, the e r and the e theta are changing. So my frame is changing, actually. That's no problem for us, though. All right, so now it's a gradient in cylindrical coordinates. So now my gradient in cylindrical coordinates is the following. So grad f in cylindrical coordinates. 
is 1 over h1, partial f, partial r, e r hat, okay? That's my 1 over h1. Then I have a 1 over h2. 1 over h2 is just going to be 1 over r, 1 over r. Then partial f, partial theta, e theta hat. And then finally, 1 over 1, that's k hat, partial f, partial z, k hat. And that's my, my ez, right? So in other words, that is a formula for the gradient of a function in cylindrical coordinates. Great. Let's do spherical coordinates now. So what are spherical coordinates? Next example. Next example is spherical. And we'll do the physics definition of spherical, which is x is equal to, I'll call it rho, rho. And then make sure I get my physics notation right. So I'm going to have a cosine phi, cosine of phi, then the sine of theta. To, the, now theta is the latitude direction. Y is going to be rho sine phi, and then uh, cosine theta, no sine theta. And then z is equal to half of my physics cap on every once in a while, cosine theta, right? Although you didn't look for Mike the physicist, right? Okay. Um, good. I, I moonlight is one though. Okay. All right, excellent. So what is, um, what's partial r, partial rho going to be? So partial r, partial rho is going to be cosine theta, cosine phi, sine theta, and then what? And then sine phi, sine theta, and then cosine theta. Okay. Now, it turns out that this is actually a univector. This squared plus this squared gives me a sine squared, and then sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So that says my, my h rho. That plus h rho is equal to 1. And then this vector over here, I'm going to call this vector over here e rho hat. Excellent. Now, what's partial r? Partial, let's do phi next. That's going to be what? That's going to be negative rho sine phi sine theta. And then rho cosine phi sine theta. And then 0 over here. Okay. And that says that h phi is going to be what? h phi is going to be the length of this vector over here, which is just going to be a, uh, let's see, so we'll have this squared plus this squared, square rooted, so it looks like I'm just going to have a rho sine theta over here. So it's going to be a rho sine theta. Like that. Excellent. And then finally, because cosine squared plus sine squared of the phi's are going to give me 1, right? The rest is going to be rho squared sine squared. Square root of that is going to be this thing over here, right? Excellent. And of course, what's the, um, what's the e if I eliminate the rows over here, if that row goes away and that row goes away, I'm going to call that my e phi, right? So this thing without the rows is going to be e phi hat over there. And finally, let's do r. Let's do uh, d rho. What's dr? dr d theta going to be? It's going to be rho cosine theta, rho cosine phi, and then cosine, derivative of sine is cosine, so cosine theta, and then rho sine phi and then cosine theta, and then negative rho uh, sine theta. Okay, so what's my h theta going to be? My h theta is going to be what? This squared plus this squared, the first two things squared over here, are going to give me a rho squared cosine squared, and this is going to be a rho squared sine squared, so I'm just going to have a rho over here as my length of this vector over here. And so if I get rid of the rho, the resulting vector I get, getting rid of the rho, is going to be the e theta hat, right? Excellent. So now we're in a position to write down the gradient. So what is the gradient going to be? So now the gradient, so gradient of f in spherical coordinates is going to be 1 over h rho, which is 1, partial f, partial rho, and then e rho hat, that's my first component, plus 1 over 1 over rho sine phi, partial f, partial phi, and then e phi hat, and then finally 1 over rho, partial f, partial theta, e theta hat, like that. And so this formula over here, these three terms over here, give me the formula for the gradient in spherical coordinates. The gradient in spherical coordinates is partial f, partial rho, e rho, 
1 over rho sine phi, partial f partial phi e phi hat, if I'm the 1 over rho partial f partial theta e theta hat, right? So these mysterious formulas that we see in like electromagnetism books, in all sorts of vector calculus books, are really actually quite simple as long as we realize this relationship that for the line element tells us how s changes, how the directional derivatives change with respect to u, v, and w, and they're scaled by these Lemay coefficients, and therefore the Lemay coefficients come in as the reciprocal of these coefficients in the formula for the gradient. Now in further videos, we're gonna try to figure out what the divergence is, and then couple the gradient with the divergence to understand the structure of the Laplacian, because the Laplacian appears in all sorts of, all sorts of PDEs in physics, like the heat equation, the wave equation, the Schrodinger equation, the Laplace equation, all across the board, the Klein-Gordon equations, all across the board, the Laplacian arises, and so I need to have a good coordinate and variant definition of the Laplacian, and this gradient of f and these, and these orthogonal curvilinear coordinates provide that definition. Thank you very much.